warm, read as conversation. To keep your family warm and survive, you would burn precious books containing ancient secrets and knowledge. Would you dare to light that fire? That is exactly how we are treating this planet. Ecologist Thomas Eisner used that haunting image to describe the current situation. He compared the Earth to a giant library, and each creature is a unique book. When we push a species to the brink of extinction, we not only lose a creature, but also permanently erase the genetic codes, miraculous chemical formulas, and survival solutions that nature has spent millions of years writing. Scientists discovered that the rosy periwinkle tree in Madagascar contains two active ingredients, also called vincristine and vinblastine, that can cure leukemia and Hodgkin's disease with the remission rate of up to 80 to 99%. A single weed is responsible for saving thousands of children's lives and creating an industry worth hundreds of millions of dollars a year. We pride ourselves on modern agriculture, but the reality is that we are dangerously reliant on a few staple crops. Norman Myers estimates that humans only use about 7,000 plant species for food, while there are 75,000 edible ones. We are ignoring superfoods like the winged bean from New Guinea, which is richer in protein than cassava and potatoes, and grows like magic or the wax gourd from Asia, which can grow 2.5 centimeters every three hours. So why are we so reluctant to protect this library? Here the story touches a deeper philosophical level. Peter Singer, with his concept of the expanding circle, argues that the history of human moral evolution is a process of expanding compassion, from ourselves, to our families, to our tribes, to our nations. Is it time we expanded that circle to include other living beings? And if trees have the right to sue, why can't an old forest or a river have a legal representative to defend its right to exist? However, compassion does not always trump immediate economic gain. If conservation is to be sustainable, it must be built on a foundation of intelligent selfishness. We protect nature, not because we pity it. Nature does not need our cheap pity. It existed billions of years before humans came along and will continue to exist long after we are gone. We protect nature because we need it to survive. We need disease-resistant genes from wild corn to save our crops from pandemics. We need compounds from venom to make next-generation painkillers. We need biodiversity to maintain our air filtration systems, water regulation, and soil fertility. Ultimately, the story of conservation is not about saving cute animals or faraway forests. It is about saving the future of humanity itself. As biologist E.O. Wilson concluded, the highest moral act humans can perform is not to turn to some supernatural force, but to keep the library of life intact for future generations. The library is burning, and we are holding the torch. Once the book has been burned, no one, not the greatest genius or the most advanced technology, can rewrite it. We only have one chance to read it.